right. Cheers, y'all. Oh, that's tasty. You know, sometimes I'm a neat guy, sometimes I like it on the rocks. Depends on the beverage itself. This is delicious. So I don't normally drink in the studio, and I don't normally drink in these videos. However, it's Sunday evening, I just put the kid to bed. I have a crazy, crazy busy week ahead of me in which I won't have time to film this. So Sunday night, let's have a chat over a drink. So thank you all for stopping by for another video. I truly, truly appreciate it. So in this video, I wanna talk about things that I make sure I have with me at every single session. And I think you could get something out of this regardless of if you do sessions at commercial studios or if you only work from your own studio. These are things that after 18 years of doing this that have repeatedly been beneficial to have around and they make the the session go smoother they've got me out of a jam several times and continually make clients feel more comfortable more at ease more at home it makes them feel like I'm in control, I've got everything handled and they can trust me. And putting my clients' minds at ease like this in a session is a really important thing to me. So the first thing I always ask myself before a session is what is the session? What exactly are we doing? Am I just tracking a vocalist? Uh, is it a full band session? Is it just an overdub session? Is it here at my studio? Is it at another commercial studio or another private studio? And then the second question I ask myself is have I ever worked this particular studio before? Am I familiar? with their gear list and what they have and is it a studio that half the stuff doesn't work half the time when I'm in there or is it a studio where everything is always flawlessly working and if something does go down maybe they have a ton of backups just in case there are for sure things on this list that I don't actually take to every session and there are for sure things that aren't on this list that do occasionally go to sessions. So this is just kind of to get your wheels turning and make you think about what you should take to every session and hopefully you'll come up with a few ideas that will help put your clients at ease and make sessions run smoother. First thing, microphones. I will almost always take a handful of microphones from my own collection to any session no matter what or no matter where it's at or no matter what we're tracking. And basically my mindset here is if they don't have something that fits a singer or if they don't have a microphone that I like, uh, make sure that I have something of my own. Or if a microphone goes down in the middle of a session, maybe I'm at a commercial studio and they have one single flagship microphone and maybe that microphone goes down in the session. It's happened before. I don't wanna be reduced to tracking vocals through an SM57 just to get through the session. So I will always throw in, for me, it's my Perlman TM47 and my Bronner Panthera. And then I'll usually throw in my Biodynamic M201, which sounds awesome on snare drum, sounds awesome on electric guitars. And if I'm tracking drums of any kind, I'll usually throw in my matched pair of Neumann KM184s. There's been a few times where I just didn't like the overhead microphones that a particular studio had, and these are kind of a good general fail safe, good high quality microphone that I can make sound great on anything. So I recently did a video and I'll leave the link to this video in the description of this video so you can check it out. Uh, it was five recording hacks in five minutes. And in that video, I talked about using weather stripping to deaden drums, specifically toms. It's super cost effective. You can tear off as much as you want. So if I'm tracking drums at a session, I will 100% of the time have some of this weather stripping. You can buy a roll of it for like four bucks at Lowe's or Home Depot, I'll definitely have this in my bag. It's a super great thing to have on you and half the time the drummer doesn't have any sort of alternative, moon gels or whatever else you would use to deaden drums. So the next thing is actually a drum key. Now at this point in my career, I've, I don't even have any idea. I've probably recorded three or 400 drummers and you would be shocked how many of them don't have a drum key on them. Now sometimes they've just lost it, sometimes it's gotten misplaced. It's not always that they're this absent-minded. It has been quite a few times I found myself in a session tracking drums and no one has a drum key. So I have a drum key that stays in my bag, goes to every single session with me no matter what. So the next thing is guitar strings. If there are any guitars, electric or acoustic, being played at a session, I will always bring at least a set of electric strings and a set
set of acoustic strings. They may not even be the right gauge or the right type for the player and for what they already have on their guitar, but in a pinch it will keep the session from getting stopped. And there's absolutely nothing worse than breaking a string in the middle of the session and it's a thousand bucks a day to be in this studio or depending on the studio sometimes two thousand dollars a day and all of a sudden you gotta halt the progress and you gotta run to the music shop hopefully there's one open and buy a set of guitar strings. So I take guitar strings to every single session as long as there's going to be a guitar player there. Now this next one is getting maybe a little bit more extravagant, but it has saved me a couple times. I actually will take one of these tube amps to a session if there are guitars getting tracked. Sometimes the guitarist's amp, I can't get the sound out of it that I want. And there has been a couple times where an amplifier went down at a session and they didn't have a backup, the studio didn't have a, a backup that worked for the tones that we were going for. And so if it's an important session where there's electric guitars getting tracked, I'll just throw an amp in and that way we can get through the session in a pinch. Now I know some of you might be thinking that this is a bit overboard, but as a producer, I don't just like direct the music of a project. As a producer, I'm responsible to manage budgets, to manage schedules. I'm responsible to make sure everything goes smoothly the entire way through the process. And so in my opinion, a good producer, not even a good producer, a great producer, does whatever it takes to make sure the project never hits a roadblock, ever. And so some of the things on this list might be a little overkill, but they have saved me before, and that's why I continue to do them. And I know that my clients, when this stuff has happened, when my clients have an amp go down and I have one in the car, I mean, that reflects so well on you as a producer that if you have the capability to, to save a session like this, you've just made a client for life. They will never use anyone else because you were so forward thinking and so responsible and so on top of everything uh, that they're going to only want to ever work with you again. And so I take all that stuff very seriously. Okay, the next thing I absolutely take to every session, no matter what's happening, is some Excedrin, specifically the Excedrin with caffeine in it, because it actually works better. You're in a loud environment all day listening to cranking speakers or slamming drums, loud guitar amps or whatever, someone always has a headache. And how often I've been asked if I had any Tylenol or something, I mean, that happens like in one out of every five sessions. And unfortunately, I actually suffer from migraines myself, and so this is as much for me as it is for my clients. There is nothing worse than getting a debilitating headache in the middle of a session, and so Excedrin, every session. While we're on the pharmaceuticals, I actually take Prilosec or some sort of antacid to every session because you're, it never fails. You're always eating like burgers and fries from McDonald's. You know, you're in the studio for five days in a row, and you're eating two meals a day that are just complete garbage. It just, that's pretty common in the studio world and so someone always has heartburn and again I just want to make sure my clients are comfortable 100% of the time including myself I want to be comfortable in the middle of every single session so the next thing I'd try to take is a handful of different thicknesses and styles of guitar picks especially when there's acoustic guitar getting played the style and the thickness of a pick can pretty radically change the tone of the guitar so that way uh, you know maybe the guitar player is a little heavy-handed and I need something a little bit lighter touch here's a super thin pick try this it saved me a bunch of times and improved the outcome the results that I got out of that session a whole bunch of times so the next thing is actually water and you might be thinking come on water that's on your list I pretty much won't work at a studio that doesn't have beverages on hand anyway but this is a little trick to make your clients feel more at home and more comfortable I always, always have water. There's always five, six, ten waters on a table in the session here in this room. There's a half a case of water in the refrigerator so they can have room temperature or ice cold water if they want. And pro tip, when you're tracking a singer, I'll actually take a bottle of water and I'll put it on the music stand right in front of the vocal mic before they even get here. And it's amazing how often that a singer will walk in and they'll, when the time comes and they walk up to the vocal mic and they look down, they see a bottle of water that's very clearly meant for whoever's singing. They always are like, oh, is this, is this water for me? And I'm like, yeah, of course. Puts them in a good mood, puts them in a good frame of mind, so that way they can put out the best performance possible and also subconsciously makes them realize that you've got everything under control. We already touched on this, but like, they can trust me. 
I've got the whole session under control. And man, that those little things go a long, long ways. Okay, before we get to the last couple items, I don't know if you guys are gonna be into this stuff or not, but I'm kinda into the whole EDC thing, which is, means everyday carry, for those of you that don't know. Uh, I am pretty particular about the things that I carry on me every single day, and these things actually do come in handy in more sessions than you would think. So, I thought we might do a pocket dump right now and see what I actually carry. Okay, so the first thing I actually take to every single session. iPhone 11 Pro Max, got this sweet Polar Pro case on it. Can This handle comes off and it can attach to tripods. Really awesome to put right there and it makes for a wonderful grip for taking video and photos. Obviously everyone has an iPhone or everyone has a phone but this goes to every session. I run my whole life on it. All right, so the next thing is a uh, pocket knife. I carry a pocket knife everywhere with me. This is a Spyderco Para 3, and uh, they really just come in handy like all the time. Like literally I use a pocket knife all the time for everything, so I take a pocket knife to every single session. Wallet, carbon fiber ridge wallet. This is a Streamlight MicroStream USB, and this is a mini flashlight, and uh, it gets pretty bright actually for this tiny little thing. I carry it everywhere with me and uh, you just pull open this cover right here and there's a USB charger right there. And you would not believe how often that someone's like, hey, you got a flashlight or like, a, you know, some cable goes bad and you have to climb behind a rack and, and there's no light behind the rack to figure out what's going on. And so anyway, everyday carry, this is at minimum what I carry every single day. I'm not sure if you guys are into that or not, but I thought I'd throw it out there and hope you dig it. Oh, and the last thing is the uh, Garmin Instinct. I'm not actually much of a watch guy, but I've recently picked this up and I really, really dig it. I'm impressed at how much less stress-inducing it is when I need to check the time to look at a watch rather than check my phone and, oh, I've got 20 messages I need to reply to. Actually wearing a watch every day has, has made me much less stressed and so, that's a good one. Okay, next thing is actually a phone charger. Now, obviously I'm an iPhone guy like we just talked about. Uh, I don't carry a charger for any Androids or any other kind of phones, but I take an iPhone charger to every single session. Someone's phone is always dying. Now this next one might not apply to a bunch of you, but I actually take uh, my camera that I'm filming this on and a couple lenses and my camera bag to every single session. Between the YouTube channel and how serious I try to take my Instagram game, it's nice to have the actual camera with me. And also, lately I've been taking photos for clients, so that way they have really high-end content to post on their socials. And again, this just makes everyone feel like, like you're really taking care of them when, when you know, the next day after the session they get 15 edited photos from the session that are like really good photos even though I'm very much an amateur it's a cool thing and so I take all the camera gear to every single session also not that it is really a big deal but the camera bag that all my camera gear lives in is the bag that I take to every session and so all the things that I've talked about so far with the exception of the big like large diaphragm condenser mics that all goes in my camera bag and that goes everywhere with me okay the next thing is actually earplugs in a pinch you know you have to run into the live room while the band's playing who knows what happens I personally take earplugs to every single session no matter what I've had to use them a couple times actually. Uh, there's nothing worse than having to be standing next to the drummer while they're playing and then have to go back in the control room and have perfect hearing for the next eight hours in the session, not fatigued hearing at all. And so earplugs can sometimes come in handy and they go everywhere with me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that this helped you. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon next to the subscribe tab and drop me a comment. Let me know what you think. What things do you take to every single session? And uh, if nothing else, help the algorithm out by dropping a comment and smashing that thumbs up button. Don't forget to hit me up on Instagram at Cool Caparoon, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.